Religious Metaphysics, a lecture by Jonathan Barlow Gee, Part 1, In Legends, Part 1, The West, Part 1A, Kabbalah. Above even the purely geometric forms of Abba, the Father, and Ima, the Mother, principle who created the cosmic demiurge who in turn created our cosmos is this diagram showing the peeled back scalp removed portion of skull and exposed brain tissue of the head of god given from a 16th or 17th century manuscript on the Tikuni zohar in his commentary on the complete Zohar of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai from 2nd century Israel, 20th century Kabbalah scholar Rav Yehuda Ashlag explains the manner of the creation as occurring due to expansion and contraction, the effect of God breathing in and breathing out, which is called in Hebrew, Tsimtsum. According to the cosmology described in the Bereshit Beth volume of the 23 book long complete edition of the Zohar, supposedly copied down into print first by Moses de Leon in 13th century Spain from the oral traditions begun by Rabbi Shimei and Bar Yochai, there were four Tsimtsums that occurred to divide apart the upper layers of each of the four elemental worlds of Hakabalah. As the first ray of thought emanated within the mind of God in a line across these Tsimtsum ripples at right angles, it caused smaller ripples or expansions outward in all directions where it intercepted the first four tsimtsums, and these were called the ten sephirot points. The rays of thoughts emitted in a single direction were called the twenty-two paths, and the sephirot nodes for the rippling outward from their intersections are called the ten emanations. The thirty-two mystical paths of wisdom are discussed in great detail in Sefer Yetzirah, particularly in the modern translation by Arya Kaplan. The metaphor of a Kabbalistic Tree of Life diagram originates when each of the ten Sephirot emanations reflecting ripples from the first ray of thought inside the mind of God emit pathways or rays of thought of their own. Here we see, expressed as a Kabbalistic metaphor of the Tree of Life diagram, the figurative hand of God that holds within it the chisel of pure light that broke the vessels of the lesser light. This constellation of figurative imagery depicting these Kabbalistic concepts is merely the language of ancient and elder peoples describing the same states and levels of awareness of the cosmos as described in mathematical terms by modern science, as I will explain at the end of this lecture. The natures of the greater light and the lesser light are further discussed in Sefer Bahir from the first century AD. At this stage, the tree of life chisel of pure light held in the hand of God, touched the surface on the origin point of God's expanding consciousness, and this action resulted in the shattering of the shells or vessels, called the cliffoth in Hebrew and the kelepod in Greek. Here we see the first appearance of Adam Cadman as the skeletal interior shape underlying the tree of life chisel held in the hand of God, in the form of the four Hebrew letters of the Tetragrammaton name of God, 
arranged in order from above to below. At the intersections of the seven lower sephirot, where the chisel of pure light broke the vessels of the lesser light, there expanded dimensions from nothingness in the following manner, as described in great detail in Sefer Yetzirah. From the centroid point of each of the seven lower sephirot expanded six directions in three dimensions. The four watchtowers attended four walls at the horizon line along the four cardinal directions, thus beginning to form the skeletal outline of the cube of space. The complete combination of the traits of the six directions in three dimensions with the four watchtower walls surrounding the cube's centroid point symbolizes the continuum of space, the three dimensions, with time, as the expanding cube formed by the four cardinal directional walls along the horizon of expansion. Thus, the cube of space-time formed in each of the seven lower Sephiroth realms where the pure light of the chisel of God broke the vessels of the lesser light, allowing the shards or shells of these vessels to crumble down and solidify surrounding these seven fallen Sephiroth. The existence of this arrangement has been known to scholars of Kabbalah for at least 3,000 years. However, even before it began being chronicled into the Kabbalistic cosmology described in most detail in the Bereshit Beth volume of Sefer Zohar, the study of the perfect Ashlar cube of space-time was being studied extensively by the master builders of Old Kingdom Egypt. The first form of this space-time symbolic cubical space experimented with by the ancient Egyptians involved aligning the point of view of an onlooker inside any of the complex Egyptian tombs with the north-south axis facing south and their arms along the east-west axis, left arm west and right arm east, etc., this form of cubical orientation for the arrangement and onlooker's point of view within an, any Egyptian tomb was applied to the positioning of the massive sarcophagus that held within it the mummy of the pharaoh. However, in the adjacent room of the tomb to the crypt housing the sarcophagus of the mummified pharaoh, which housed the canoptic jars containing the pharaoh's dehydrated organs, as well as in the outer chamber of the tomb, containing the doorways to the crypt and to the room housing the canoptic jars. Both of these rooms, furniture and decorations, are arranged according to a different variation of the same cubic model showing the position for an onlooker to stand to assume the correct point of view for observing the accoutrements and art of the tomb. Here we see that, in the outer chamber and the adjacent room for the canoptic jars, as opposed to the layout and arrangement of characteristic traits in the room with the large sarcophagus, the onlooker is encouraged to stand facing west, with their arms extended with the right toward the south and left toward the north. This is where originated the concept of the perfect cubit-hewn ashlar stone symbolizing the perfection into pure spirit of the greater light from a mental condition associative with an imperfect soul and the lesser light symbolized by the rough-hewn or unworked ashlar stone. Where these two cubes begin to relate to form a single cube seen as separate from itself only over time, the chisel tip of Hakabala touches the centroid thought at the core of God's mind, and Hakabala becomes anthropomorphized as Adam Cadman. Part 1b Adam Cadman
Cadman. We have now followed Kabbalistical reasoning as it attempted to plot the formation of the cosmos and its forces from a point beyond even the exterior of the head of God in which our cosmos is only a dream. As we zoom in toward the depiction of the head of God, we enter the realm of the glowing gloom, the bright darkness, the false light, etc., wherein our cosmic creation began being brought into being. As God's singular ray of thought emanated downward toward the core of his consciousness, outward rippling flow, piercing downward to discover the source of its perturbations from an absolutely calm, still, zero energy field, it shattered these original vessels in four places, forming the division of the cosmos into the four elemental forces or four hakabalistic worlds. Each of these worlds formed into its own cosmos. In Hakabalistic world of Isaiah, the lowest and central most realm, there were ten ripples emanating from the utmost central core world, which was called Malkuth, meaning the kingdom. The three supernal sephirot of these ten did not expand and remain as ethereal levels invisible within our own physical cosmos, but present in the form of the effect of our consciousness resulting from them as cause. The lower seven sephirot of the ripples in Isaiah expanded into the six cardinal directions and the inner direction of the passage of time. These form the dimensions of the cosmos surrounding Malkuth, the kingdom. The four dimensions, the three doubled into six cardinal directions, plus the fourth direction of the forward motion of time, and the four elemental forces, fusion or earth, electromagnetism or air, fission or fire, and gravity or water, are reflections in the lower realm of Isaiah the cosmos of Malkuth, of Hakabalistic concept of the four worlds, Isaiah, Bariah, Yetzirah, and Atzaluth. The four-letter tetragrammaton name of God symbolizes all these thought models and is shown here anthropomorphically depicting a man's anatomy as having two legs, final he, two arms, he, and a head, Yod, around a single torso, Vav. This anthropomorphism of the Tetragrammaton is also the first formation of God inside the cosmos around Malkuth in the form of Adam Kadmon, meaning the cosmic man. In his depiction of Gnostic concepts studied in Takuni Zohar, Eliphas Levy, 19th century French Kabbalist, shows us the first stage of coming into being of Adam Kadman, wherein God, as the waters above, perceives himself as darkness on the face of the deep, in the cosmos as the waters below. His image appears distorted from its own point of view inside the mirror below God because of the disruption from stillness by God's breath moving like the wind on the air above the deep, causing the first ripples to begin emanating from Malkuth, the kingdom, deep within the mind of God. Thus the demiurge, devil, Satan, or anti-God first appears as the reflection of God in the disquieted waters of the lesser light in the cosmos below. Next, as shown in this drawing also by Levy, God figuratively lowers himself into the cosmos of Isaiah surrounding Malkuth to become Adam Kadman 
or the cosmic template upon which the bodily image and likeness of 